The A330 NEO is Airbus's answer to the ever-growing need for aircraft in the wide-body sector. Launched in 2018 with TAP, the plane has seen a slow order tally, but is it really a failure? Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more aviation analysis. The A330 NEO comes in two variants, the A330-800 and the A330-900. Its most significant difference from the CO is that of its engines. This is primarily the same plane, but the NEO stands for a new engine option and emphasizes the intent Airbus had to re-engine the A330 and provide an updated aircraft rather than opting for a clean sheet design. As we know, clean sheet designs take a significant amount of time, manpower and overall resources. They can also be costly, and the need for orders to break even is higher than simply re-engining an existing aircraft in the company's portfolio. Thus far, over 70 aircraft have been delivered to over 20 customers. But is the aircraft ultimately performing how Airbus may have envisaged, and can it be described as a failure? To better understand trends and to answer this question, we have to shift to Boeing quite a lot during this analysis and the early 2000s, when the American aircraft manufacturer was plotting the launch of its own 787 Dreamliner. During this period, you could argue that the European aircraft manufacturer, Airbus, didn't see the 787 as an aircraft that would genuinely be so competitive in the industry and then successful. They were working on their own programs, notably the world's largest passenger plane, the Airbus A380, and if we track back to the smaller A330, well that was delivered in the late 1990s and pacing along well at the time. Airbus was trying to find, though, very quick ways to combat the 787's launch and the upcoming success it was no doubt going to have. They explored new A330 designs, but ultimately the response was actually largely received as unfavourable. So, during the midway point of the 2000s, Airbus went back to the drawing board a board that would see them eventually opt for the A350, a highly successful plane as we know today that we see flying. It has been undoubtedly a lovely plane to add to the portfolio that Airbus offers. But some airlines still wanted a re-engined or new A330, especially by the 2010s. Why was this exactly? Well, thanks to the commercial success of the 787, some airlines wanted something to compete with Airbus in that specific field, with better overall fuel burn. In addition, the A330 was becoming quickly dated with some customers. From all of this, Airbus did express interest that they may actually build such an aircraft. Boeing, on the other hand, were having none of that. They wanted to ensure by all means necessary that they could kill off the program before it even launched, whether that be through pricing, deals, and or variants, and to a certain extent, it did work. When the A330neo was launched off the back of strong customer interest, it was launched with a fuel burn that would be improved by 14% per seat. They intended to sell 1,000 of the aircraft. Given the parts being 95% shared with the A330CO, the the overall cost of also maintaining such a series wasn't ever expected to be high. Additionally, the lower capital costs meant that producing such a plane and flying it would boost efficiency tenfold. Not only would Airbus benefit, but the customer in question would too, making it a great plane for the medium-ranged wide-body sector. Of course, the one it fitted into. Ultimately though, analysts have predicted a weaker demand for the A330neo since its launch. While this aircraft goes up against the 787 Dreamliner, the reality is that in most cases, the 787 is a more favoured choice among customers. Only in specific instances do airlines prefer the A330neo, which impacts the sales, market, demand and so much more. Airbus has also primarily seen their Dash 800, to reiterate that being the smaller variant, fade away. While yes, the aircraft flies, the number of orders it has welcomed in is incredibly poor, and the main times it's made the news has been for those cancellations. The Dash 900, rather, has led the A330neo program. So in terms of orders, yes, the aircraft hasn't performed really that well, and the Boeing 787 still shines in this sense, despite all its production issues. But that's not all there is to this question. Back to what I discussed earlier. One aircraft is a clean sheet design, and one is a very simple modernization of an existing plane. This means that Airbus could keep the costs low on the development and production of the A330neo. It means they don't have to make as big of a return, nor pay off, say, ridiculous amounts of fees on the program. It's a very simple modernization that they were able to do. 
Maybe it bit them in the foot a little bit with how simple it was. Perhaps, though, they were also too late to the party. But for now, it has worked in many markets that did take the time to invest in the plane. And while the aircraft does suffer a few issues, like being a bit too heavy, it is a series that can hang around and wait for people to order it whenever they require it. With the pandemic and more, we definitely saw customers put their checkbooks away. But as airlines seek more replacements for their aging planes, Airbus will put forward this A330neo as an option. Now, whether that translates into orders is a total another question for another day, and only time will tell. The Boeing 787 has and continues to have a lasting impact on the A330neo's success. Airbus does benefit, like I said, from the low development costs of the program, and it's been a relatively simple modernization. They look at the type as one that slots into the medium range wide body market, which means it actually fits into more of a niche than the 787 family, niche being a very important word, hence its lower orders. But the areas it can fly on it has undoubtedly done well for the customers. Moving forward, the A330neo will, according to analysts, never hit the heights that maybe were initially expecting, say 1,000 total orders, and in comparison to the orders we've seen for the 787. But it doesn't actually need to. So is it a failure? Generally speaking, failure is a very, very strong term, but I don't think it is. It certainly hasn't performed as well as expected. Potentially launching it earlier could have helped, but the reality is we'll never truly know. Before I do go though, a bit of a plot twist to the question and with thanks to data sourced from Airbus. Despite their struggles to launch said A330neo and make it successful, they did actually see steady growth of the A330CO even after the 787's launch. You could argue it was a very late bloomer. But still, the reality is that the market for an aircraft nowadays, like the A330neo, is much smaller than it once was, especially with the 787. It's therefore never going to go out and sell thousands upon thousands of units, like potentially an A321neo would. Thank you very much for watching this deep dive analysis on the A330neo. If you have any thoughts on the program, do feel free to drop them below in the comments. Until the next video here on Globetrotting, we very much appreciate your support.